great campaign at UC Davis. Um, I'll be giving a little bit of my presentation today with uh, Alice Vitell as well. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Alice. Um, so I'm the chair for the Environmental Policy and Planning Commission, um, which, like UC Davis Fair Trade Campaign, that group of students is kind of based under. Um, so yeah, I can just, you want me to just pop right into it, Kyle, from the beginning? Uh, sure, yeah, Alice is gonna do the first part just because she was the one who began this campaign and, and kind of transitioned the roles over. Uh, and I'll finish this off with some more information, yeah, so. Cool, um, so yeah, we, my friend and I, Lois, found out about fair trade um, campaigns and essentially we were both on the Environmental Policy and Planning Commission, which is a commission of our student government. Um, so I actually sit on the Senate table for our student government um, because I'm a commission chair. So it's senators and commission chairs. We get together. Outlet into student government. Um, and so we were able to kind of nest uh, fair trade campaign underneath that. Um, and that's how we got all the other commissioners involved in it. Um, and so that also gave us really good access to student housing and dining and one of our um, food centers on campus our big coffee house is actually run by student government um, and so that was also like a kind of a direct outlet towards uh, leadership for our coffee house um, and then we also that then we had like access to a budget because we're part of a commission um, and we also were able to like, introduce a senate resolution to um, because commissions can introduce resolutions to the Senate table pretty easily, essentially just by bringing it up in Senate meeting um, and sending it to our student government office. Um, so yeah, the institutional advantages were really helpful um, because we had that really quick access for the resolution and we had direct access to a bunch of campus outlets. Um, and so when we also when we emailed student housing and dining, which is separate than our coffee house, they also knew who we were um, and kind of it gave us a little bit of credibility contacting them and saying, oh, here we are with like already this team of students. Um, and yeah, and then we were also really able to connect with all the other commissions and committees um, and other clubs on campus um, because we kind of already had an, like a affiliation with some other group that was already uh, well known. And then this also helped us kind of getting um, students involved. So this, I started this my junior year, I'm a senior now, and Lois and I were both on the commission last year. And then we had a, a big like turnover of commissioners because people had graduated, but because it was, had an application process um, set in stone that was kind of already institutionalized. So we were able to kind of bring more people onto the campaign uh, essentially because that interview process and application process was already uh, set in stone. Um, so yeah, and then I think that's about it for my part yeah. up to when you came on. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Alice. Um, so that's when I came in. Uh, so Alice did an amazing job kind of using a specific strategies uh, to ensure that the campaign transitioned nicely and smoothly and and is built for longevity. Um, so we had specified roles, uh, a democratic voting process, and uh, ways that we made sure that our team would be unified in the future. Our team of, of you know, uh, younger people, you know, kind of taking over these roles uh, from the graduating seniors. Um, and can everyone see my slide share, by the way? Is everyone, okay, cool. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, awesome, thank you. Um, so we had these specified roles, and you know, when I say specified roles, it wasn't just, Alice coming up with the roles. Uh, it was probably the part when you know I was able to become most involved, and the other commissioners who are who are currently in these roles were able to become most involved. Uh, we came up with these roles uh, together, and you know when we built these roles, uh, we didn't just uh, you know build them with an eye for what can it contribute to the campaign. Uh, we built them with an eye for you know what can these roles actually contribute to the individuals within the campaign. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that each role uh, helps someone build a specific skill set that maybe they're looking for. Uh, maybe they want to use it later in a, you know, in a, in, a, in a job application, or maybe it's just something that they want to learn. Uh, so for instance, our, our communications coordinator is a role that involves, you know, marketing and social media. Uh, events coordinator, you know, you get to learn event planning and, 
and those skills. Um, you know, externals relations coordinator, you get to work with, uh, you know, uh, you know, businesses and, and fair, tra you know, fair trade groups outside of the campus and, and bring them into the conversation. Um, so now, so each role, you know, allows someone to build a, a specific skill set that they might be looking for. Uh, so that I think one of, those, one of the, the important parts of building these roles is we got input from people and what skill sets they wanted to build and made the roles based off of that um, instead of just kind of, you know, arbitrarily assigning them to people. I think people felt like the roles would be valuable to them and that they were valuable in those roles. Um, so the roles I listed below, um, chair, vice chair, I kind of described communications, events coordinator, and we also have coordinators working with uh, the two main entities uh, uh that you know house all the vendors at UC Davis. Uh, so one works with student housing and dining, and one works with uh, the student governments of vendors. So um, we also had uh, once we decided these roles, a democratic process for uh, deciding them. Uh, so we had applications to the roles on a Google form, and you could nominate uh, you know other individuals into these roles. And you know this ensured that people felt like the roles were not only generated fairly and generated in a way that you know, they would benefit from, uh, but also were received fairly. Uh, and we ended up only having to really vote and decide on one role that two people put down. Uh, basically everyone else, their first choice was, uh, that role is the only first choice was for them. Um, so I uh, ended up working out pretty smoothly, but uh, that was an important component. Uh, and then finally, you know, ensuring the team is unified. So. We didn't want to just jump right into the campaign, uh, you know, right in with these new young uh, members and and uh, you know have them take over these roles w without you know the you know properly you know getting to uh, you know come under a unified set of goals and unified understanding of fair trade. Uh, so for us, the, the Fair Trade Nationals Conference allowed us to do that, and we were very thankful of, of the travel stipends we were able to receive from fair trade campaigns. Um, and uh, these stipends allowed all of our members to attend, but we had a particular, you know, focus on making sure that the younger members could, could go. Um, and that made sure that these members were able to, uh, you know, kind of get to know each other on a trip. You know, we already knew each other pretty well at the commission, but I would say you get to know each other better when you're trying to, you know, when plane flights get canceled and you're trying to figure all that out. And, um, and uh, but, you know, in addition to that, you know, we we're all able to kind of get the experience of what fair trade is together. And, you know, over dinner conversations and, you know, and talks, we were able to discuss the complexities of it and kind of as a team decide, you know, on a common definition of, you know, what's the goal that we're going for? Uh, what is fair trade? Um, you know, how are we going to go about, you know, promoting it at our university and uh, making, you know, making a fair trade UC Davis a reality? Uh, so, you know, and you don't, you don't have to go to a fair trade nationals conference to do that as wonderful as the conference is. Um, there's, you know, lots of team building exercises out there, but it is important to start, I think, for us uh, with something like that um, before we jumped right into it. So, uh, and that's it. That's uh, that's kind of how we were able to transition over from, from Alice to uh, myself. And, um, you know, I'm definitely excited to, to continue the work that Alice has done and, uh, you know, finish, uh, you know, getting UC Davis to fair trade status uh, and, and then going beyond that and, uh, you know, educating, you know, more students about fair trade and making them aware of, of uh, its, you know, its benefits and its values. So, and uh, that's all for me. And if anyone has any questions, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you, Kyle. And thank you, Alice. Yeah. Um, we definitely do have a couple of minutes for questions if anybody has one right now for uh, the UC Davis campaign. Uh, one of the questions I had is um, when you're talking about roles and assigning them, uh, about how many members were you working with at the time that you guys decided how to divvy out roles and things like that? Yeah, um, about, I'm going to say eight members, and I'd have to count again, eight or nine. Yeah, so, uh, and that's a pretty solid number, I think, for us to, to start with. Um, and they were all happen to be in our commission. Um, there's, we have like another project going on right now, Herbicide Free. Um, that we actually went and, um, you know, advertised, marketed for those roles, I should say, um, uh, you know, outside of the student government and went to classrooms and stuff. Um, but you know, we had enough interest from our commission alone that we were able to fill those, those vacancies with uh, about eight or nine, and I have to count again, but about eight or nine commissioners uh, when we transitioned over. 
I think we've got maybe one time for one more question right now. If anybody has questions uh, for Kyle or Al. All right, well, we definitely have questions, um, time for questions at the end as well. We'll have a little discussion period. So thank you again, Kyle and Alan. Uh, next, we will be moving on to our, our next speaker. Um, so next, we have uh, Jenna Thomas, who is a sophomore at Cleveland State University uh, studying nonprofit administration and Spanish. Uh, she's also a member of the National uh, Student uh, Leadership Committee. Um, and so while creating human traffic awareness, um, with a local nonprofit in high school, she and her group decided to focus on the use of forced labor in the U.S. imported products. There began and continues a long journey from Jenna of research and discovery uh, for the important uh, and complexities of fair trade. Jenna founded a fair uh, a chapter of the Free the Slaves at uh, Cleveland State University in 2017, which quickly transformed itself into the university's platform for fair trade. And with that, I will give it away to Jenna. All right, can everyone hear me? Yeah, awesome. Yes. Good. All right, <clears throat> so uh, I'm president of the Fair Trade Campaigns group in Cleveland, Ohio, at Cleveland State University. Um, I'm going to talk about things. Um, we... Jenna, just one second. If someone's um, not on mute, can you go ahead and mute yourself? There's a little bit of feedback. That's a lot better. Thank you. Go for it, Jenna. There we go. So I'm going to go into a little bit of the committee rules. Um, let's see if this. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen, uh, my friends, uh, Alice and Kyle? Because I can't share mine unless. You want to be but in the meantime, I can talk about something else. Um, a really cool initiative that Cleveland State uh, helped found is this coalition of progressive organizations, which involves all the presidents of interested uh, organizations on campus, um, because we find that one of our goals with sustainability is like really building relationships, not just between your mem like yourself and your members, but also other orgs. So it has only been um, in effect for uh, we, f we started it in January, but it has already been really freaking awesome. Um, so what that looks like is we invited all these presidents um, of the different orgs, like the vegetarian advocacy organization, um, like the feminist organization, uh, the Peer Student Alliance, the Cleveland State Democrats, um, the Student Environmental Movement, there are more members. Um, and we now throw collaborative events together which really help us to like push our own agendas in different ways. So like now we've begun asking um, these other organizations to source fair trade when they host an event. Like today, EarthFest was this really big event at CSU. They serve coffee, it was fair trade. Um, in fact, they added fair trade as part of a green event guide um, that all students can reference when planning events. Um, but I think most importantly is those like relationships like hanging out with the people that you're working with um not just in a professional setting but actually like learning about them and why do they care and like um you know being having a vested interest in learning about the people that you're working with not just in your group but all across campus can seriously change the, the way that you hold power at a university um because now like we help when the vegetarian vegan advocacy group wants meatless mondays and they help us when we like need um more fair trade option in our <coughs> stores that we still haven't gotten uh, full fair trade on so um that is one part of something that we're doing the other part okay let's see how we can do this you should be able to share now jenna in the bottom middle it's a chase share screen yeah that's yeah. it so we have started to implement three different or two different committees um as alex mentioned we are both a fair trade organization as well as um a human trafficking awareness organization so we kind of wanted to split um that work into two different areas um so here you can see what the fair trade committee looks like um we kind of wanted this to be shaped in the way that like it resonates with people like you can't just say if you're interested in fair trade because people might not even know what that is. So like talking about advocating for refugees and immigrants. Um, 
you know, they're the very close ties to the environment that this holds. I think that has been a really great um, selling point for people. Um, and then talking about tasks and talking about how they would gain experience and like, like UC Davis mentioned, like, how would this be helpful to you? Because there are a lot of skills to be learned when you're organizing on campuses. Um, including, I mean, we've, we just threw a, a, an event with the Human Trafficking Committee to um, bring in a speaker. Um, so I can show you a little bit more about that. And kind of defining the differences between those. Um, we have found, of course, that everyone wants to be on both or, you know, can't really pick a side, but ultimately it helps people to, um, it helps us to have those two very focused missions. Um, so this is more involved with maybe women's issues. We also like to um, seek out nursing and social work students for this particular community because they often will encounter survivors of human trafficking in their fields. Um, and yeah, and then we also have, uh, we are currently trying to fill our treasurer position. So uh, we did create a um, little sheet for that as well. And it's a pretty digestible kind of um, way to, all right, how do I unshare? Pretty digestible way to like see, um, yeah, how, how you can get involved in the group. So um, I guess one other thing is that we're actually now making a different transition. Um, so we have gone through a little bit of a bumpy ride with leadership, as I'm sure a lot of you um, experience. So we're actually being absorbed into a larger, larger organization that is more based on social justice in general. It's called the Ohio Student Association, and they f deal a lot with um, uh, you know, voting and uh, prison reform, um, but they also care a lot about workers' rights. So we kind of decided that this fair trade workers' rights generally was going to fit into a committee underneath them. Um, I guess uh, one more advice, piece of advice I could give you is like, don't be the single figurehead wealth of knowledge that I know a lot of people end up being for the organizations. Um, I know I have, I know it's something I hear a lot from other people. Um, there are tasks that you can delegate. I promise you there are. Um, and like being as like, um, like introspective is making lists of the things that you do for your organization. And not only to help you see that the work that you're doing, but also to say, okay, what can I now be passing off to other people? Um, I think that's really helpful um, because I know that part of the issue with sustainability is like you become, you know, we're, most of us aren't operating on like a 30 person like organization. Uh, so we end up doing most of the things ourselves or being the only person who knows how to, I don't know, like submit a budget and things like that. So, you know, actively trying to write lists of what are you doing today? What are like the small tasks that you can delegate to other people? Um, social media is a really great example of this. Um, you can have multiple people doing that, uh, and making sure that they're taking pictures when they're in the dining hall and see that fair trade thing and remind people like this is an option that you have. Um, we order a lot of handouts and stuff from Equal Exchange um, and those are free. Uh, and I've delegated that to our VP. He's in charge of knowing what our inventory is, knowing when he has to reorder those handouts and posters and things like that. Um, so there are things and that was fast, I know, but is there any, any questions? Yeah, we do have questions if anybody has one uh, specifically for Gemma at this time. And remember, if you're asking a question and we can't hear you, you're on mute and you do need to unmute yourself. Be surprised how many times that happens. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. okay. So Jenna, um, when delegating and giving uh, committee members responsibilities, did you find any issue in having in, um, them being accountable for actually doing these things or keeping up, uh, keeping track of these tasks that you've given them? Um, in some cases, sure, but I also drop the ball for myself a lot of the time. So, um, yes, there have been issues. Um, actually, like with our faculty advisor, like sometimes they don't approve things when they're supposed to. Um, like we've definitely had issues where things fall through because people didn't didn't do it correctly the first time. But um, making that a learning experience has been really helpful. Um, I would say, yeah, but it's probably something that it's better to delegate and have have a person like end up not doing it than 
hoarding that knowledge and action because then eventually you're going to graduate and that's just going to be that for the org. So I would say, yeah, taking those hits, even if, yeah, if you're giving a freshman some, some things to do and they mess it up, like it's a learning experience and like, yeah, something uh, we all have to deal with, I think. I had a question if, if you were done. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about just come up, kind of some of the events that you used to engage with students on campus and just sort of if you had any ideas or suggestions for that, things that work um, well. Sure, yeah. Uh, we like to do collaborative events. So for example, um, well, we just did a human trafficking, like we had a speaker come in um, and we tapped into that coalition of progressive orgs and we asked them like invite all of your um, your other members and they like a lot of people even dedicated their meeting time to going to our event. Um, so speakers are actually a pretty solid thing. Of course, we had lots of free food. Um, we do a lot of tabling, but sometimes we like around the holidays, we did a combined tabling with the vegan club and they gave out vegan eggnog and we gave out fair trade hot chocolate and it was a um, like a holiday themed like giveaway type thing. Um, we also just try to support other people's events more so like saying, hey, well, we're going to throw you guys some fair trade tea and like put a handout next to it. Um, because we are operating as like a five to six person group, depending on who responds, um, working on it and growing. Um, but we definitely try to sh have that impact by getting other organizations to source fair trade and talk about fair trade and make it, <clears throat> um, yeah, make it purposeful. Uh, I think there's also a lot of other creative ways. Um, we donate to like we donate to a local rape crisis center um, who takes cell phones um, and recycles them and gets funds for it. And I know that's really specific to us, but um, tapping into those community groups is really helpful. Um, they are also very, you know, well connected. Like for example, Kylie um, has introduced me to our Ohio Fair Trade Network um, group and they are extremely supportive. And on top of that, they hold events. Um, they hold events in the collaborative and human trafficking of Cleveland holds events and we try to attend those or at least let our members know about them. So I hope that helped. <laughs> All right, awesome. Uh, so then to keep us on track for time, uh, we'll be moving on. So thank you, Jenna, I really appreciate that. Uh, next up on our speaking list, uh, we have Daniela uh, Samari uh, from Arizona State. Uh, she's an undergraduate honors student at Arizona State University studying conservation, biology, and ecology. Uh, she became involved in the Fair Trade campaign at ASU in 2017 and took over as chair in 2018. She's currently the chair and co-founder of Sun Devils for Fair Trade, and she'll graduate with a BS in conservation, biology, and ecology in May of 2019, and uh, does intend to go to Columbia University's graduate program for environmental science and policy. Uh, thank you, Danielle, and I will hand the mic over to you. Thanks, thanks for that introduction. Um, today I'm not going to be using slides, I'm just going to be talking and I love questions. So I'm probably going to talk briefly and then leave up the rest of the time for questions. I think that works, that, that's my personal style. Um, so yes, I'm the president of Sun Devils for Fair Trade. Um, we are the entity that now houses the Fair Trade campaign at ASU. Um, we established ourselves as a, a student organization called Sun Devils for Fair Trade um, uh, over the summer of last summer um, in 2018, I guess it was. And uh, we are housed under undergraduate student government. Um, so we receive um, budget and, and, and funding. We submit our budgets to them and we receive funding from them. Uh, so the university itself, really. Um, we, as an organization, focus more on the education aspect of uh, the campaign. So just our education outreach, for the most part. Aramark um, has been amazing in that they've taken over the, the procurement um, part of our designation uh, almost altogether. We have very little... Not that we can't have input, but we, we don't really 
um, talk to them too much about putting new products into our uh, pod markets and dining halls anymore. Um, this may change as the years go on and we want to possibly work on getting a procurement policy in place um, so we could source all fair trade. Um, but that, that's, that's a huge undertaking. And so we're, we're good where we're, where we're at right now. Um, and uh, as a student organization, we have divided up roles uh, such that there's a president, vice president, um, secretary, treasurer, and uh, a social media chair. Uh, our org is very small and we have just enough people to fill all of these roles. Right now we have five people, uh, two of us are graduating. Um, and so there'll only be three people in the coming semester. Uh, but we hope to get more um, recruitment uh, through opportunities like Passport at ASU, which is this huge event that happens, uh, I think it's annually, not semesterly, um, when every single organization at ASU tables um, to get uh, interested students to come and join their club. Um, and there's thousands upon thousands of students that attend that event. Um, so that's a really great way to uh, recruit new students. You get kind of get grouped in terms of what sorts of um, agendas your organizations have. And so um, fair trade at ASU is falls under the third, the three pillars of sustainability. So social, environmental, economic. Um, we kind of focus more on the social aspect, so that social pillar of sustainability. Uh, we kind of fill the niche uh, there that um, a lot of the other organizations don't that are pertain to sustainability at, at ASU. We've worked with um, a bunch of other organizations to have all of the events that we've had this past year. Uh, we've done film screening, screenings um, with Changemaker Central, which is like an organization that um, it's a space for students to collaborate in and of itself. Uh, I, I can't speak to their mission as well as um, my vice president can um, because he particularly works for Changemaker. But um, we've also worked with Green Greeks, uh, which is a, an organization that uh, works towards sustainability efforts within the Greek village and the Greek community. Um, they've been amazing. Uh, we've worked with um, custom-made uh, clothing at ASU, and that's a club that um, is a space for students to come and talk about um, fashion in it's a safe space for them to just discuss whatever they really want to discuss. Um, and they're helping us with the fair trade fashion show tomorrow. Um, and I think one of the main reasons why we've, we've done as well as we have this past year is because um, we make ourselves as visible as we can uh, across campus during our tabling events. Um, we network uh, within the people in our classes, um, within uh, there's this one organization called the SUSA. I think it's Arizona State Un University Sustainability Alliance. Um, and it's this kind of, um, it's supposed to act as this umbrella organization where all of the sustainability organizations at ASU can come together and discuss upcoming um, events and collaborate uh, with about their resources they need, um, funding ideas, things like that. Uh, and they, that's been pretty helpful. Um, in terms of us getting partnerships for some of the events we want to do. But overall, uh, uh, whenever um, from an interested student or a student organization, we always say yes. We never say no unless there's like a prior conflict um, just because we, we want to uh, establish that relationship. And so um, using both of our networks to uh, extend visibility across across the networks that we've built together. Um, I think with that, I will, I will end it um, for questions. I hope that I covered some of the bases there. So I had a question. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, and a lot of you guys talked about like how you fit into your school, like how you fit into your larger or like university. And I, coming from my previous university where like the school had a lot more like sustainability overall was a lot more of a priority coming to a school where I don't feel like that's the case I guess 
how do you feel like you fit in when you are trying to convince a university to prioritize sustainability even in small ways Mm -hmm. like I think I don't think we're at a place where we could like ask them to like change vendors and stuff like that but just trying to like make it more of a conversation like starting in small places where it's just like improving recycling programs and like things that are just affecting students maybe not necessarily affecting their procurement policies and stuff like that Mm -hmm. I'm trying to like I'm struggling to like find openings for like how to make that more of a priority and it just seems like a lot of you guys' schools there was like a place where it kind of like fit into the larger mission of what was going on Hmm. that's a really good question um we have particularly worked with uh university sustainability practice which is um it's a an institution at asu that oversees all the sustainability efforts across all of our campuses so like the recycling programs, composting programs, everything that you could think of that's related to sustainability in some aspect is, has to go through that institution. That's where it's, it's held. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've had a lot of um, luck and generosity through that, that institution in helping us establish um, our designation and um, pass our resolution up to our um, president's office. But I would say my, I guess I would recommend, because it is really difficult, um, going to the office that is in charge of the recycling on campus or in charge of like, I don't know if you have a composting program, Mm -hmm. um, some sort of environmental institution um, and maybe playing into that environmental aspect of fair trade and seeing if that you can appeal to them using that because I know um, social sustainability may not be as much of a priority, but environmental is usually if it's on, it's going to be on the agenda, if not at the very bottom of the agenda um, of your university. So that's that's what mm-hmm. I would recommend. I don't know if that's feasible, and I hope that kind of helps. That makes sense. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Um, if no one else does, I didn't want to interrupt someone. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I know you mentioned networking in your classrooms, and like I think that's really important and great idea. I'm wondering if you guys, your members, have like an elevator speech that you're all kind of using, or you're just kind of going with conversations because I I know either way can work I'm just wondering what kind of model you guys use yeah that's a great question um what's what's really fun about the tabling events is that um (laughs) when we get new members they aren't really sure like how to describe fair trade uh so they kind of listen to some of the older members discuss um and give their elevator pitches to um people that walk up to the table uh but I I haven't really given um, like a script for anyone to follow, really. Uh, I think it comes best when it's spoken from the heart. And so um, most of the the newer members uh, that have like watched me give this speech honestly do it better than I do now um, because they're much more eloquent. Uh, they, as long as you give them some sort of like a, like a model, I guess, like if you just uh, have them practice alongside you, I think that works. I, I don't really like to box anyone into what fair trade is because it has so many different meanings. And um, if people want to emphasize one aspect of fair trade versus another um, and um, play up what the person that's play up or play into their audience, if that makes sense, a little bit better by, by emphasizing those different aspects, um, just say how about it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, well, I did want to, before we go into discussion, I just wanted to open it up again um, for kind of general questions for all of our, our speakers. Um, and so the first uh, one of those is, is, is one that I was thinking of. Um, and that was, you know, a question that I think uh, Jenna had brought up, but how do you all kind of tackle the, the idea of delegation and, and spreading the responsibilities to these roles um, or are creating roles in a way that naturally takes that over? Um, you guys have any insight on that or any kind of feedback? For... Um, yeah, I guess I'll go first. Um, so I'm, I spoke about this uh, quite a bit, but, you know, we created our roles in a way that uh, everyone had input in what those roles would be. Um, so 
at the same time, we did, you know, have specific roles that perform specific, um, you know, operations. Uh, so that way we ensured that, you know, every part of our campaign, uh, you know, continued and uh, was maintained after, you know, the seniors, uh, uh, the seniors, you know, left their roles. So, um, so for us, it was pretty natural. We used kind of all our, you know, we, uh, you know, made the roles and together and, you know, as I said, made them in a way that uh, would be beneficial to both the team and to the individuals fulfilling those roles. So is there anything else here? Any other questions there? I also think a point that we all kind of mentioned was that a lot of the leaders that come in or even just members like have their own set of like their own skill sets and that we make roles kind of flexible to fit like what people want to do. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example of that. Um, I mean, I personally was super excited to do the cell phone drive because I really love the Cleveland Rate Crisis Center. Like they're an amazing organization. I thought it was a really fun and creative way to um, <clears throat> to to fundraise for them. Uh, graphics are another thing that I don't do. Um, I always delegate that and having a good graphics person on your team is extremely helpful. And also uh, they don't even necessarily have to like super identify with your mission. It's great if they do and they usually end up because fair trade is a great mission. Um, but even just tapping into like media people um, and saying, hey, here's an outlet for your graphic design skills. Um, that's a, another solid role to pass on. Um, yeah. I also think like, it's really important to let other people facilitate meetings sometimes. Um, presidents end up facilitating most of your meetings. Um, maybe making the ask of your VP or your treasurer and say, hey, today, do you want to start with, you know, our check-ins? And like, do you want to, you know, be this, like, I'm going to sit this one out. Um, it People don't not like it when you ask them to do things. It actually helps them like feel more a part of the org. Uh, awesome. Well, at this time, uh, uh, before we head into discussion too, I did want to offer up uh, the time for any other questions uh, of our speakers that you all might have. Uh, feel free to, to add those now. I also thought of another answer to Jenna's question about events. We threw a board game night that kicked butt. Um, we made people bring their favorite board game. We ended up actually not playing most of them. We played straights, but that was just a fun thing. And like, like I said, like having relational um, activities outside of like your tabling and stuff, it really helps, you know, secure sustainability in your leadership and with like your members on like return for the next semester. Awesome. Well, so, um, Seeing kind of no other questions, one of the things that we wanted to do with this uh, this opportunity in this moment um, was to open up time for discussion so that we can, as campaigners from kind of all over the nation, uh, can have a little bit of time to discuss amongst ourselves and, and to really kind of connect or, or, or throw ideas out there and really create that conversation. Um, so that's what we're going to go into now. Um, we've got an open time for discussion um, and we can really kind of, if there's issues that are you know, questions or problems or challenges that you see are coming up with um, that are related to today's topic or are just really, really pressing. Um, now might be a good time to open that up and, and to get some feedback from other campaigners. Um, to start, you know, one of the things, uh, the kind of question to get the discussion going is, um, if you don't mind, you know, those who are comfortable sharing, how do you currently structure and plan your organization? Like what are the roles and then uh, what are some of the challenges you've come up with? or come across in the way that you're starting to structure your organization. Um, I can go first again. Um, so we, I don't know if I spoke a little bit about the different, or if Alice spoke about the different uh, entities within the association of government, um, but we do have commissions and then uh, uh, committees. And our, the commissions each have a chair uh, on the Senate, and so they're able to actually speak and advocate for certain issues at the Senate meetings. And then committees are created often by uh, commissioners and you know, invite people from maybe outside the student government to come in and fulfill those roles. Um, 
So we're unusual in that the fair trade uh, campaign is directly within our commission. Um, I think for most schools, it would make more sense uh, to make a separate committee uh, because there's likely lots of interest, uh, you know, outside of the student government in fair trade. Um, it just, there was so much interest in fair trade within our commission that it, uh, that we just kind of kept it, for now, it's kept within the commission. And I think it could move out um, pretty easily. Uh, but I think the, the connection to the student government, either way, uh, helps quite a bit, um, you know, in terms of advocating for, you know, issues pertinent to fair trade and, um, you know, and, and networking and, and that sort of thing. So. I think that one um, kind of issue that uh, our campaign came across uh, this year was the fact that we, we have these uh, roles delegated uh, within our constitution and um, it's sort of the, the president's job or the, found, the founder's job to um, go over what those roles are specifically and discuss like what the objectives of each role are. Um, and so I think that uh, before you get started um, each semester um, or maybe doing like a mid-semester um, layout of uh, what those roles are in your uh, organization is really important um, just so that students are can keep track of, of what's expected of them um, and they aren't left guessing um, and uh, also feel like they're part of the committee rather than just kind of floating. Um, so. Hello, um, can everyone hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hi, I'm Emily. I, I just joined the call. Sorry, I was at another conference. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm from Brown, a sophomore, and um, we founded our group about about a year ago, uh, we were officially designated as a student group um, in the fall of 2018. So I, I don't know about other universities, but I think you all have re received the designation, correct? This is a mixed trade, group. So there's actually okay. um, several in progress campaigns on here and several declared. Okay, yeah, that's great. So I, I guess my university would still consider part of the declared campaign stage. So we are, when we're talking about um, a committee, this is something that we're currently forming. Um, but as a student group, uh, we have about, I would say about 11 active members. Um, and the way we structure it is that we have a core team of leaders um, of three to four students. Um, and we would have the rest of um, the membership would then fall into either um, a sourcing team um, or a campus engagement team. And the reason we split that is because we think it's important that um, <clears throat> we don't overburden students and because we are such a small organization, um, by joining us means that you will actually do a lot in, in, in terms of um, raising awareness about uh, farm workers and um, the issues that we are passionate about and uh, trying to resolve. Um, and so our sourcing team has I would say about three to four pe uh, people. Um, we mainly focus on researching our current suppliers um, for um, our, the foods on our campus, and um, and then we will all. The sourcing team also sets up meetings with administrators, with uh, faculty and um, staff in dining. We also have so our campus engagement team just. Um, is focused on more on the outreach aspect to the students. So your educational events and all those things fall under um, fall under their responsibility. So that's how we structure our organization. But all these teams we meet together every week, and the, the core team leaders would also meet additionally an hour every week to kind of keep everyone to the timeline. And um, it's a small group, um, but um, I think that's actually an advantage to start with uh, because everybody feels like they're involved and there is something that they could do. Um, students have flexibility um, and, and we understand when they say these two weeks are difficult and we couldn't help as much as we could. Um, but I think having it be small, uh, students are actually willing to uh, jump on board um, and we actually never had to, you know, sort of coerce students or plead them to help uh, kind of uh, pick up a responsibility and most of the, most of them are willing to uh, participate and because that makes them feel like they're they're an integral part of this campaign and um, all of them are a lot of 
the students in our group are actually able to hop on meetings with the um, administrators, which is, I think, something that they are, feel, feel encouraged by, um, is that they, they're not only, only behind the scenes, but they actually get to speak with you know, our provost or um, one of our vice presidents. And, and I think that's um, the, the flexibility that's also built in into uh, the lack of hierarchy um, is, is something that I think our group does well and it serves our students well for this stage of where we're at. Yeah. All right, well, thank you, Emily. Um, we've got a little bit of time left, and one of the things that I wanted to do with that time is just kind of ask everybody um, how, how they're doing with their own organization and their leadership. And um, I, again, I thank you all to our, our speakers who are able to join us. Uh, um, but I'm kind of curious to hear from some of our, our, our participants as well. Um, so if you're comfortable doing so, I'm curious to hear about maybe why you uh, wanted to come to today's training and, and what are some of the things that you are working on or, or thinking about when it comes to um, organization within your own fair trade campus. And can folks mention their name and their campus campaign as well um, before you speak, just so we can get a sense of who all's on the call? Well, I can go ahead and start, I guess. My name is Alexis Lichen, and I am at the University of Nevada, Reno. Um, one thing that I found um, interesting or at least um, insightful was uh, an issue that I, I deal with, I guess, which is um, delegating responsibilities and then having those uh, the people that I delegate those responsibilities to be uh, accountable for what they're supposed to be doing. So. Um, you know, just hearing, uh, and I felt like pretty much all of the speakers touched on it, but just uh, giving those responsibilities out to people and whether or not they do it, it's still the fact that I delegated, um, you know, is the core, uh, I guess, aspect of our core important thing to do. Um, so yeah, I think it was very just, uh, it kind of opened my eyes that maybe I don't need to do everything in the club or I don't, um, I should be able to rely more on my members. Um, I'm Jenna. Um, I'm a student at Hillsdale College. I think I sort of got put into this because I'm interested in um, starting, like getting something started on my campus. Um, so I don't want to take up too much time with my questions because I'm very much in the beginning stages of this. Um, but I did want to ask Jenna one more question. Um, so I'm looking at uh, like getting started on my campus and it's a very conservative um, campus, sort of like not much of an emphasis on sustainability or different things. And like uh, there's not very many clubs whatsoever. Um, and so the approach I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to your approach, which was starting, I mean, I'm guessing like starting with Free the Slaves and then incorporating fair trade. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but one way I've thought about bringing in fair trade would be by starting with uh, like trafficking awareness, et cetera, and just sort of combining those things. So I was wondering if maybe you could speak to how your club addressed human trafficking in the beginning and then how you've made that transition and, and sort of how you balance both. And I don't wanna take up too much time. No, that's a great question. And I, and Lexi also runs a combined organization. I think it's a pretty common thing out there. Um, and it definitely brings more people into the fold who might not really be interested in like labor necessarily, but oh, there's a lot of, I don't want to say it's like a hot button topic, but sex trafficking is like a pretty, uh, you know, um, like, I don't know, resonates with people. People want to, to fight it. And human trafficking is like it's something that applies here. It's something that applies abroad. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can go about it. And it's so closely tied with fair trade that like, I don't even think they should ever be separated. I think we should all be talking about both at the same time, regardless. Um, I think it is a great way to start. I would say another thing is that there are a lot of resources for um, people who are doing both. So like, we are also part of the, <clears throat> the McCain Institute, um, which I think runs out of Arizona State. 
or something, but they offer us funding. They send us stickers. They send us, they buy our food sometimes. Um, they're a really solid resource to have. Yeah, the Student Alliance Against Trafficking at the McCain Institute. You guys, I would recommend that to a lot of you guys. Um, like Kylie is always there for us um, and like is always a great resource. And like the McCain Institute has those people too. Um, they are really awesome. So I would say it's a great choice because it brings more people into the fold and because there's more resources. You can find community organizations that are fighting it as well. Um, so uh, I wouldn't say it either takes away from fair trade or like anything like that because I think they're both so closely connect connected. Thank you. Can I add to that response real quick? Um, regarding the, the disconnect between, yeah. Yeah, feel free. Okay, so yeah, you made a great point. I know who you gave that response. And I, I think that um, how your trade could play in would be um, a way of saying there is something tangible that the university could do with this um, power, right? Um, with, as, as a large institution to make purchases that are more ethical. And I think another way to also go about it is say, um, Fair trade is a tool. It's not a, a solution, but it's a it's, it's a tool that can help us bridge the disconnect that we have when it comes to food or when it comes to um, industries that um, sex trafficking or human trafficking is um, such a prevalent problem. Um, and I think this playing into that okay, fair trade is a tool to bridge that disconnect between us as consumers and um, and the labor um, behind it down the, at the bottom of the chain. And I think it's just one one way to kind of frame. And I think these two, yeah, definitely can be brought together. It's just the, the language that you use, um, and and fair trade seems to be the practical piece that the university can do. Um, yeah, the kind of makes it the more cool, socially conscious, right? Um, and I think. It's just depending on how you how you play language, I think that these two things definitely go hand in hand. Uh, was there any other kind of questions or comments that anybody would want to bring up about organization, about um, how their campaigns are going, or anything that they might? Um, Kind of just want feedback on uh, at this time. Hi everyone, my name is Travis Broadbeck, and I'm actually calling out of uh, Colony, uh, which is basically the Albany area of, in, in upstate New York. And I was on a um, a, a college and university campaign for five years, and I fell off that, and now I'm on this town um, campaign. And I'm just interested from all your perspective, how, how would I go about trying to reach out to other campaigns in the area um, and try to partner between a town and a, co uh, a college and university? Because I do remember running a college and university campaign, um, you're almost too busy to actually be able to collaborate with another campaign, especially of a different type, and especially when it's off campus. So it's hard to get volunteers and such. So I'm just interested if you have any perspective or any stories to share. I was gonna say, as someone who's like in an area where, or like at a school where the community is definitely more plugged into issues related to fair trade than my actual school is, I feel like, honestly, if there was like a campaign that was my town, that would actually be super, super helpful. I feel like if you partnered and maybe did like an event that's open to the public, but like on campus, that would probably be a great way for those two like populations of people interested in the same things, like advocating for the same things to kind of like come together. Because I think college students have like the time to plan like events and like that like organizing element of it, but they usually lack a lot of like resources, which are things that like towns or like something larger like that can access much more much e much more easily. So I feel like that collaboration could actually be really beneficial to like both people if there's schools near you or other towns even that are campaigns. I don't know if there are other campaigns near you, but if there are, I feel like that would be beneficial in terms of like a better way to have events that are not so focused on like a student population and more focused on like the issues. Um, 
one of the things I can offer too, just as a as a recent college, college grad myself, um, when I was working on different uh, activities, one of the things I found most helpful was uh, if I had a regular meeting that I was working with, if a community member came and came to that men, uh, meeting, it was a great opportunity to create those connections. Um, I know with fair trade, some some groups and some campaigns have regular meetings and some don't. Um, so that might be a difficult thing to find, uh, but I think it's definitely worth looking into because uh, sometimes just showing up and being in the right place at the right time is a, is a really good avenue. One thing I would add, just a last comment, a lot of town campaigns need help with events during certain times of the year. So if you have a town campaign near your campus, think about the holiday season. There's a lot more town campaigns now doing fair trade pop-up shops um, and fair trade film screenings around the holidays um, in, in the, the late fall and also World Fair Trade Day in the middle of May. Um, a lot of town campaigns um, want to do events around World Fair Trade Day, but need help and need volunteers to, um, to, to staff those events. So there's these moments, I think, throughout the year where, where that collaboration is key. All right, well, thank you everybody uh, for, for joining in our discussion and, I, and for today's training too. Um, as we've been talking about, we'll have some resources, uh, resources definitely available. Did want to hand uh, the mic over to uh, Alexis then for, for closing us out. Yes, thank you again. It was very insightful to hear from Kylie, uh, sorry, Kyle, Jenna, uh, Daniela, and Emily, just about how their universities are handling these issues. And hopefully they were able to give you guys all some advice that you guys can, uh, you know, integrate into your campaigns. Um, please be sure to look out for any emails about our next training so that we can have you guys all on the call. And, you know, having this communication so we can keep building our campaign so again thank you so much for showing and hope to see you next time thanks everybody and thanks to the national student leadership committee uh to alexis and to jenna and nabi and alex for convening the call we appreciate it all right thank bye. you uh, thank you everybody bye bye everyone thanks mm -hmm. thank you